Well, good morning. It's good to be here. It's good to be alive. What an encouragement to be alive during a pandemic. We don't run away during pandemics. We ask the coach we want to stay. Yeah. That passed over your head, huh? <laughs> The greatness of sports stars, maybe basketball or anything like that, the greatness of a player is determined by who wants to take the last shot. Many players want not to take the last shot because you don't want responsibility. Yeah. When there is a pandemic, when there is a famine, you and I need to take responsibility. We need to ask Jesus, I am not coming home now. Let me stay. Good. But you see, the theology we have is rapture. We want to get out of here. Jesus is praying, keep them from evil. You're praying, let me go. <laughs> Whose prayer will be answered? <laughs> Hallelujah. If I'm going to be honest with you, I am nervous about what I'm going to say. Didn't want to say it. It's not bad, but it just might be new to some people. And I didn't want to take responsibility. So Jesus says, you want to get out or you want to stay? Mm. I say, I want to stay if you help me. Yeah. I like preaching good sermons and encouraging words, and I like mysteries. <coughs> but I don't like taking the last shot. I've never been a firstborn. I was a lastborn. <laughs> So, thank you for praying for me. I need it. I'm assuming I have one. Yeah. I have time. Okay. Yeah. All right. The last three months I've been caught up in just talking about the Spirit of God and, and knowing Him. His humility is unmatched. How do you create the whole universe? How do you create people? How do you create systems? How do you create services? How do you give gifts to men and you don't want to talk about it? Many times he's ignored. He's the most ignored person in the Trinity. We talk about Jesus and he's loving and he's faithful. But it's the Spirit of God who introduced you to him. It's one thing to know Pastor Dave, and you can know him as a pastor, you can know him as a minister. It's another thing for Pastor Aina to introduce you to Pastor Dave. Yeah. Because what she says to him, he is inclined to hear. When the Holy Ghost introduces you to Jesus, yeah. not as a savior, as a friend, mm. it's a different ballgame. So today we'll do something I've never done here. I want us to stand up and just welcome my friend, the Spirit. He's here. He needs honor. He needs to be acknowledged. He doesn't ask for it. But I think it's important to honor him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's the author of all this. He knows what everybody is saying. And you'll see as the service goes, because he gives this person this one, and he gives this person this one. When you come together, you see what he's doing. He's the genius of all geniuses. He's beyond intelligent. He's beyond sweet. Sweetness doesn't describe him. It's close. Kindness, loving is close to him, but it's not him. He's more than that. He's, he purifies like fire, but he's more than fire. Yeah. He's as gentle as a dove, but he's not a bird. He's the mighty, mighty, mighty Holy Spirit, and he lives <laughs> in your body. Your body is his temple. He doesn't live in your spirit. He lives in your body. So your spirit 
and him live in your body. So your body is his temple. Over 300 trillion cells in your body and he occupies each cell. And each cell is in a different dimension, which means the body by itself is capable of going into over 300 trillion dimensions wow. because of the mighty Holy Spirit. Why do you think the devil is after it? Yeah. Why do you think Jesus got it back after he rose from the dead? Why did Moses get it back? Why did Enoch keep his? Why did Elijah keep his body? Something mysterious about the body. It's his temple. Yeah. It's the only technology that can house God. Solomon said, the heavens, even the highest heavens cannot contain him, yet your body contains him. Wow. So it's the only, it's the wisest, it's the loftiest creation God has ever come up with, the body of man. Right. And the devil does his best to make you think the body is useless. It's not. We have a doctrine that, oh, you know, after I die, I go to heaven. You've lost. You've put aside the most precious gift with the moment you step aside and go to heaven, you regret, oh my God, I should have stayed. Jesus said, if I want you to stay till I come back, what's that to you? Yeah. But if you want to go, he'll let you go. But you go on the other side, you say, oh my God, I would, I would have done more. Mm -hmm. I would have done more in this body. Precious Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. We thank you. You don't like talking about yourself, but we today we acknowledge you. You're the mighty God. You're the one who makes life life. You're the one who quickens all things. And we love you this morning. We love you this afternoon. We love you all the time. You live in us. In you we live and move and have our being. Without you, we can't even know who Jesus is. Without you, we can't even know who the Father is. You, Jesus gave himself to you for the purpose of the cross. You executed it and you apply what Jesus did for us. So we thank you, mighty Holy Spirit. We thank you. We honor you in this service. As I open my mouth, I ask that you'd fill it in the mighty name of Jesus. You'd prepare your people to hear what you have put in my heart and Jesus will be glorified. Father, we welcome your presence here. Jesus, you are welcome here. We acknowledge the presence of angels who are here and the angel that stands beside me to preach this word. We acknowledge your presence and we are aware of your, your doings in this meeting. We thank you for pastors Dave and Aina and the entire leadership of River of Life. We bless them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Practice. Practice being aware of him. Just practice being aware of his presence. Now, one of my precious possessions and uh, discoveries I've had is to preach this gospel and live this life with my one precious Pauline Ondachi. That's my wife. <laughs> She's a major discovery, go. Major. She's the door to my favor. <laughs> I treat her very carefully. And I want to see what God is doing, I observe her. I mean it. She's precious. Whoever finds a wife yeah. finds a good thing. Thing word finds a good word and receives favor yeah. that begets favor that begets favor yeah. that begets favor from the Lord. So I've been favored because of. Okay, we came to River of Life because of her. You know that? Wow. I was at home praying, thinking of the next big thing, but she came here. <laughs> story for another day, but I, it's through her. It's through her that we came to the U.S. She's the one who got the scholarship. And we've been blessed with two wonderful children. Eden is right there. <laughs> That's a powerful man. I, I, I believe he, he can preach better than me. You just haven't had him yet. <laughs> I'm serious. 
he doesn't even know that. <laughs> but he's very eloquent, very intelligent young man. He's, he's in college now, first year doing business. He'll take over his father's business. And we have Aliyah. Aliyah is quite something. She's at the back there. <laughs> but we are blessed. Yeah. We've been blessed to be here, Pastor Dave. Thank you. Yeah. Like I tell you many times, we live in your vision. We are here. Without you and Pastor Aina, there's nothing here. Without a vision, people perish. But without the people, the vision perishes too. So we acknowledge the soldiers who've been with you, the preachers, you know, and you know, people who've been with you for many years. You know, we, we acknowledge it's not easy to, there's a disease or lack of disease. There's a good thing called stickability. Yeah. The ability to stick and stick it out. People want quick things, microwave mentality. Oh yeah. You stand before a microwave and say, hurry up. Because you, you're not patient. B but people who can stay, stay the course, That's right. we acknowledge them. We are not going anywhere until the Lord tells us to. We are here. Amen. We are not here to preach. We are here to find out what the Lord wants. Amen. And when you find out what the Lord wants, you do it. Yes. So we are safe. We have a father in the house. Thank you. You know, you, you know, fathers are not intimidated by the success of their children. We've had fathers who never went to college. Yeah. Pauline has a PhD and a master's. I have two masters. Our parents are not intimidated by that. Yeah. And Pastor Dave is not intimidated by anybody who can preach. Right. It's brothers who fight. Right. If you find people fighting, they're brothers, brother, sister. Fathers don't fight children. Fathers actually celebrate their children like, go for it, sir. We are good here at the river. Amen. I'm just saying nice things because you might not. Mm, <laughs> when you get into this. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Let me do what my daddy says. He says, Pastor Pius. Say, Pastor Pius. Pastor Pius. Lay it on me. Lay it on yeah. That's what he says. Oh, right. I'll do that. <laughs> Now, one of the other discoveries I've found out is this book. This book has layers and layers and layers and layers and layers and layers and layers. And you can study it for eternity. I found out something about called the Hebrew letters. One Hebrew letter, one, like the Aleph, one Hebrew letter has 72 layers. Yeah. Yeah. And one Hebrew word has another 72 layers. So if you just study in the beginning, you have 72 layers of that. Mm -hmm. That's why you can keep on looking at the same word over and over. And it speaks to you something again. Right. That's what Jesus said, and I say to you again. Yeah. Like, look at it again. Now, when it begins, this book, it says, in the beginning, God, or the Hebrew says, in the beginning, Elohim, who means creator, or the creator who is a judge. This book begins with a God who is a judge. Who created the boundaries of where everything is going to be and live. And he set them in place. And he raised up a man called Moses to write something called the Torah. Mm -hmm. Or the law which spelled out the boundaries by which man is going to live. And Jesus came and fulfilled the Torah and set up a higher standard. Yeah. But the reason I'm saying this is the Bible is a very interesting document. There is nothing like now we're in the New Testament, we've done away with the old. Forget that. The whole thing is legal. The Bible is a legal document. And it is full of legal stuff. Ah, what are you going to talk about today? I want to talk about taking advantage of the courts of heaven. I will write a second book. I'm already writing a first one. I'll write another book called, for now, 
the advantage takers. Believers, Christians, whatever you want to call us, we are the most advantaged people because we have a covenant with God. But yet, many times, we do not take advantage. Well, many people will say, well, the devil is against me. Jesus defeated him. Well, sin is my problem. I'm always sinning. Well, the blood is available. Right. Well, I don't have a friend. He says, I'm going to be your friend. Yes, sir. So what's your excuse? Why are you and I not taking advantage of the cross? Why are you and I not taking advantage of the blood? Why are you and I not taking advantage of the technology of communion? that brings back your memory from before you got to your mother's womb? Why are we not taking advantage of the Holy Ghost who lives in you? He knows everything. Everything. The Bible is full of words which are primarily used in court. And religion has painted them to be somewhere outside of court. Like Jesus calls himself in Revelation 3.15, the faithful and true witness. He says, after the Holy Ghost shall come upon you, you shall be what? My witnesses. So somebody told you witnessing is taking a truck and telling someone about Jesus. Or telling someone about Jesus say that's witnessing. Wrong. That's some religious stuff. That is just going to tell someone about Jesus. Call it what it is. A witness is somebody who sits or stands in a court and testifies about what they witnessed. Now, I'm saying this because we are living in a generation at such a time as this where there is a pandemic, where there's very scary things happening right now. And unless you and I take advantage of the court system that God has put in place, you will be judged with the world. You'll be in trouble, just like the world is. Because, let me tell you, the world is in trouble. But for a Christian has plan B, heaven. <laughs> we are getting out of here. Let the world go and get in trouble. No, you need your mind renewed. Why are you offering me what I have already? Don't offer me heaven. Heaven is in me. Death is not the worst thing that can happen. Jesus defeated death. When you die, you don't even see that spirit of death. You just move. Right. Let me not get ahead of myself. Now, this book is a legal document. Jesus, you and I, are born again legally. We are born again by documents that were ratified in a court. The devil cannot challenge the legitimacy of your salvation because blood was shed legally. When Adam messed up, when he was deceived and he sold us out, it needed to be bought back legally. Yeah. And Jesus did that. Did. But there's something I want to throw at you, at you that needs our attention, and that's why I'm here. I've not told you anything new. I hope not. <laughs> I'm 
going to have fun. Uh, you know, I told you, you, you interact with the Holy Ghost and introduce you to Jesus, right? Interact with Jesus, he'll introduce you to the Father as a friend. And you start knowing things about your father that you didn't read in the book. One of the things about our father, he loves his creation. Did you know that the Lord has no problem with Lucifer? You know he loves him? It's his creation. Lucifer just chose the wrong path. God has no hatred. But he is the fun part. Do you know Lucifer's name? Do you know the devil's name? Let me tell you what the dude lost. He lost his name. Yeah. You know what he does. Don't know his name. You know what demons do you by their assignment. You don't know their name. Angels have names. One of the privileges of working with Yahweh is you keep your name. Yeah. When the devil fell, he lost his name. Nobody knows his name. But there is a name you never hear in Christian circles, but if you know that name, that he was called by before he fell, you will find out his assignment and why he's good at it. His name is Heilal bin Shaka. <laughs> Heilal. Read the Jewish Orthodox Bible, Isaiah 14, it's right there. Son of the morning. Bin, Osama bin Laden, bin, son of Shaka is dawn or morning, Lucifer, the shining one. That's his description. Now, Helal is a cherub. You know what a cherub is? Oh. You know what a cherub, cherubim? Yeah. You know what a cherubim is? Ezekiel 28 says it's the anointed cherubim. Now, you and I, religion has taught you that the devil is just the devil. No, no, no. He is a cherubim. Yeah, yeah. A cherubim is a creature that God has made, the Holy Ghost designed, with four faces. Ah. You see in the book of Revelation, the cherubim before the throne, they have four faces. One is the ox, lion, man, eagle. You see the same thing in Ezekiel. You see the ox, the lion, the man, and the eagle. Now let me make it exciting for you. You remember the Gospels? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew talks about Jesus is the king, the lion. Mark talks about the ox, the burden bearer. Luke talks about the son of man. John talks about in the beginning was the word, the ego. So the Gospels by themselves show the cherubic nature of Jesus, which is a type of you. Yeah. Is that news? Eden. How come nobody's running around excited? That's a joke we have with him. You see, you are a type of Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus has a cherubic nature by himself. You have no problem with him being the Lion of Judah, do you? Yeah. Lion? Now, the four faces reflect the fullness. This, the cherubic nature is what God told Abraham. 
walk. He didn't just tell him, walk before me and be blameless. He literally told him, walk before my four faces and I'll perfect you. Walk before me looking at my faces and you'll become like me. Didn't Jesus say, be perfect as your father is perfect? So it's possible. Holy quietness. Come on now. I'm telling you this because what we are dealing with has been an enemy that you didn't know how to deal with him because you didn't know his name. His name is Helal bin Shaka, the anointed cherub that fell, who has four distinct faces. A cherub that fell, he fell and lost his countenance from heaven and now displays four faces. You want to know the four faces of the devil? One is the face of a dragon. The other one is a face of a snake. The other one is the face of Satan. The other one is the face of devil. Those are descriptions. Satan and the devil is not the same functionality. Satan is a terminology for adversary. The one who takes something that you've done legally and stands in court and opposes you. Devil is a tempter. Somebody who lures you entices you with what you've done and tempts you. Snake is a very wise creature that observes you for a long time and knows how to approach you. And dragon is a consuming, warring creature that can eat you alive. And Lucifer, Helal, has all four descriptions depending on his assignment in you. Now, here is where he beats us, hands down. He tempts you. Then he accuses you. Yeah. In a court. In heaven. Yeah. And when you don't show up in court, he gets the legal papers to destroy you. Listen. Listen. You hang out the Holy Ghost, you find out the Trinity within him. What's the Trinity between the Holy Ghost? The kingdom of God is not what? Meat and drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You hang out with Jesus, what Trinity do you find in him? He's the way, the truth, and the life. You hang out with the Father, what do you find? Righteousness and justice and truth. Hang out with you, what do you find? Body, soul, and spirit. So the Trinity is in you, you form 12. It's a government. So you and God are quite a government, a powerful government. Now, Lucifer knows this. The only way I can get you and get you good is if I go to court and get something against you. And I can legally defeat you. Because he knows salvation and anything you're going to get in God has to be on a legalistic nature. Yeah. Have you ever seen I see beautiful stories <laughs> in Exodus? Beautiful story. The burning bush. Wow. You see the father coming to Moses. And he says, I have heard of the affliction of my children. I have seen the way they are suffering. So Moses is there, and I have come to deliver. So Moses is like, if you have seen, if you have heard, if you have come, why are you telling me? And you'll find out Moses refused. <laughs> he gave six different excuses. And for every excuse, I mean Exodus chapter 4, every excuse, God gave him two or three answers. Right. Moses didn't want the job. He did not want it. He says, man, you've come here. You have seen it yourself. I wasn't there. You've come to deliver. W God is saying, like, look, I have come in my might, but 
you go. <laughs> Me. Why? Because God cannot come and deliver them out of Egypt illegally. He has to have a human agent who can agree with him and we do this thing legally. And Moses cooperated and boom, the rest is history. Now, let's deal with Satan. Satan. <laughs> you find that word very interesting. It's not just a terminology that is used on him, but anytime, even when God, how oh, can I say this, Lord? God opposes or resists the proud. It's that same word. He gives grace to the humble, he resists the proud. The devil has to get something on you for him to resist you in court. So now, you find Balaam has been approached by Balak to prophesy mm -hmm. or put a curse against the of Israel. Remember the story, Numbers? Yeah. When God clearly shows him what to do, he goes against what God wanted and moves. Now, Numbers 22 22 has a very interesting number. It's easy to remember, Numbers 22 22. It says, When Balaam left, he says, an angel stood in his way as an adversary. That word is Satan. Oh. <laughs> now let me flip open your Bible. In Second Samuel 2.24. Second Samuel 24, verse 1. It says, The anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel and incited David to number Israel. Remember that? The anger of the Lord was kindled against David. Okay. The same story in First. Chronicles 21, verse 1, it says, Now Satan incited David to number Israel. He's not talking about the being. He's talking about the anger of the law that was resisting what David was about to do. <sighs> now you and I, need to be aware of whom you're dealing with at any particular time. Because the devil knows this. He cannot and will not mess you up illegally. <laughs> He's afraid of God. <sighs> he has to find something that he can accuse you of so that he can go to court, get the papers, and resist you legally. Oh. Now you understand why I was being nice in the beginning? Yeah. This is something the enemy does not want you to know. He doesn't. The devil has been wanting Christians to be so mad at him and bind him and cast him out, but he doesn't leave. He likes drama. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 18 is a very strange scripture. Paul said, I wanted to come to you, but Satan resisted us. 
Oh, if Paul was born in Kenya, if Paul was born in Africa, we know what to do with the devil. Oh, Satan, I bind you. I resist you. I cut your legs. I frustrate you. I cast you out. Well, you do that the whole day. Paul did not. He actually said the reason we could not come is because there was something legal against us. Check your life. There is something the devil looks at and finds. So Peter tells you the same thing, First Peter 5, 8. You be vigilant because your adversary, he never said Satan, your adversary, the one who tempts you, I've just translated for you, the same guy who opposes you is the same one who tempted you. Your adversary, the devil, walks around to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. Yeah. Now you see in that one sentence describes the cherubic nature of the devil. First of all, he's walking around snaky. He's observing you. You know, very snaky. Jesus said, be as wise as a serpent. You know, you, you know, you know what a serpent does? Have you ever watched National Geographic? Have you ever looked at how a snake attacks a rodent? It doesn't just come, hey, Mr. Rodent, I'm here. You're going to be my dinner today. No, that serpent will wait for an hour plus. Being very still, observing every movement of that rodent until it establishes a pattern. And it is camouflaged in the surroundings. Until the rodent is sure, all is well. You see, Lucifer is a slow learner, but he learns. You know, when he's hunting for a rodent, you know what principle he uses? Be still and know I'm the devil. Oh, yeah, he's still. So Jesus uses this to say, when you're winning souls, be as wise as a serpent. You need to observe the people you are witnessing to. You need to know who you are dealing with. So Peter says, be vigilant. Watch out because this antidicos, that's what is antidicos depending on the accent you have. Antidicos, antidicos is somebody who resists or denies you your rights in court. That's the New Testament Greek word for adversary. One who denies you your rights in court. He will tempt you to mess up so that he can take something in the courts of heaven and say, this is what they are doing. They can't cast me out. Then, if you don't show up in court, by the way, uh, because of the nature of what I do, I'm a therapist. I'm in court often. I'm very familiar with downtown courthouse, even during COVID. <laughs> I have noticed a courtroom is not an emotional place. You can't come there with the drama. You can't come there with praise and worship. Uh, I praise you, judge. Hallelujah. <laughs> you, you don't do that. You're very still. You only do what you're told. And if you observe in a courtroom, there is order and there is protocol. Yeah. That is the place where you see friend and foe are in the same place. They are not fighting. You find the prosecutor <laughs> and your attorney are in the same place. They are not fighting. They are there to present their case. It is the judge who rules. So Jesus throws something which you need to notice. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 24, he says, Agree with your adversary quickly. Yeah. Because if you don't, when you get there, they'll hand you over to the judge. And the judge will hand you over to the tormentors. Tormentor? That's a dragon. 
the devil wants to accuse you and hopes you don't show up in court. Because if somebody brings you to court and you don't show up, it goes in their favor. If you want to understand the book of Job, it's a court case. Job never showed up in court. Oh, the devil accused him. Does the son fear you for nothing? <laughs> you bless everything you have. God says, behold, he's in your hands. Job wasn't aware. The devil took legal papers. Legally. He came and destroyed everything he had. But God says, well, don't take his life. But he plundered Job legally. Job destroyed the fence. With his fear. That's all bad news. What's the good news? Get to the point. <laughs> Just what I've been telling you from the beginning. Take advantage of what Jesus said. Listen. The devil is smart enough. He cannot falsely accuse you. Or if he does. Let me give you an example. Jesus was well led to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Yeah. Read your scripture carefully. Jesus was never tempted during the fasting. It was after. Yeah. After he got his breakthrough. Then the tempter came. But of course, Jesus did not yield to that when he has beaten the temptation, every devil he encountered was accusing him or tempting Jesus to say something he should not say so that they can get him in court. You remember the devils were saying, we know who you are, the son of God. Come on, read, let the Holy Ghost tell you what they were saying. They were not acknowledging that you are the son. No, 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 they were saying, look, you are doing this not as a man, but as God. It's an accusation. Jesus says, shut up and get out. Yeah. You see, you never argue with Satan. You rebuke the devil. Yeah. <laughs> when Satan has a case against you, all you have to do is show up in court. What do you mean? Jesus said, no man has ascended into heaven except the son of man who is in heaven. Now Luke 22, a very strange verse. Jesus says, Simon, Simon, who has desired to sift your wheat? Satan. Satan has desired to sift you like wheat. Where did Jesus see that? In court. Where was he seated? In court. Are we not seated in heavenly places? One of the places is a courthouse. Which you and I are supposed to be seated in. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. So all you have to do in a courthouse. Is let the devil bring everything he has against you. Oh come on. Listen, this is the wisdom of God. When, the, when Satan has come, this is how smart he is. He might not accuse you for what you've done. He will accuse you what others have done through you. It's a valid case. Let me give you an example. So you come at the river. <whistles> well, every Sunday... Try to talk to Pastor Dave, Pastor Aina. They don't see me. The words of knowledge never talk about me. I don't benefit. I go for prayer. Nothing works. So you leave. After you've left, you go, ma, 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 ma. the river of life doesn't care. The river of life doesn't care. Brr, 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 brr. 
Satan takes that. Yeah. Goes to court. Yeah. Then he says, I'm going to resist the river of life. They do not care about people. Is that a true fact? But it happened. Did somebody actually leave? Yes. Will that stand in court? Yes, if you don't show up. <laughs> so guess what? People don't come. And you wonder why. Oh, Satan has something against you. All you need to do is show up in court yeah. and say, uh, let, let Satan bring what he has. Brrr, then you say, guilty. That's dumb. No, that's what Jesus said. You want to call what Jesus said dumb? Jesus said, agree, yeah. agree with your adversary quickly. <laughs> agree. Now, when you do agree, Jesus says, good. Now that you are guilty, my blood will cleanse it. Yeah. Then now you become innocent, and now the devil has nothing on you. Oh, let me tell you the biggest one we are facing right now. Oh, Pastor Dave, I'm sorry. There might not be a love offering after this if I say this. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things we are facing right now in this country right now. I, I, re I really don't care your political disposition right now. But <laughs> the devil has tempted people, especially Christians, to hate the president. Yeah. <laughs> and the moment you open your mouth, and believe you me, Trump has given enough evidence to be hated. Yeah. But that is the temptation. Yeah. If you take it and you say, this is a dumb president, what has he done? Oh, Satan takes that. And he's happy to drag you to court and says, he accuses the father, don't your children have to pray for those in authority? Right. What business does he have against the president? He's hating the president. I have a right to resist him. You don't show up in court, the dragon shows up. Starts devouring your children and your property and your business. And you're binding and losing and nothing is happening. I don't care whether you like Trump or not. He is the president. You're not against him, you're against the office. Yeah. And Lucifer doesn't want you to know that. We pray for those all. You know when Paul wrote, we pray for all those that are in authority. You know who was Caesar at that time? It was Nero, the person who killed him. Paul was saying, you pray for those in authority. Pray for them. Yeah. That it may be well with us. Right. Oh my goodness, you have cases waiting for you. Take advantage of the blood. Go to court quickly. Settle stuff. Well, I'm about to wind up. The, I can teach this for weeks. I'm serious. <laughs> but the Lord is smart. He gave me an analogy yesterday and I found it strange. See this? What's this? It's not just money, it's money. <laughs> this is a hundred dollar bill. Straight. Never been used, can assure you that. It's been my wallet. I have a few more, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's nice. So yesterday I'm walking around preparing, then the Lord told me, I want you to do this in the service. I'm like, what? Because he said, the enemy accusing you in the courts of heaven has nothing to do with your destiny. It will not affect who you are. All he's accusing you of things you did in the body. Because he wants to torment the body. He cannot touch your spirit. He can't. 
but it can make your life in the body terrible. Terrible. Until you utter things to curse your own life, nobody can curse you. So I said, okay. Then he said, this is where it gets interesting because I had no clue what had happened. <laughs> Don't ask me to ask you this question. Mr. Antoinette, come. Now I know why. Let's come. So, see the Lord said, this is like you. You have power. You know, if you go to Walmart like this, you can answer a few questions, you know. <laughs> you know, a product asks you a question on the shelf. Can you buy me? Yes. I, I can afford you. <laughs> so the Lord picked you out. And I said, this is why I said, he said, you call Sister Antoinette and ask her this question. He said, you see, he says, your life is like this. A hundred dollar bill, sought after, very precious, can do many things. And then he said this, even if people don't think much of you, people accuse you of many things, it's still a hundred dollar bill. Yeah. If you unfold it like this, and you go to Walmart or whatever, you can buy your grandson something. You see, you can come out of the courthouse. You've been accused. You feel bad. You've misunderstood. But the blood cleanses you. You might come out folded. <sighs> but you still got the power. We, we can't go into... The, 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 let me give you homework, like a good teacher. <laughs> Find out why Jesus told Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Find out why when Jesus gave Judas that communion, Satan entered him. <laughs> might not be the cherubim you are thinking about. has something to do with the anger of the Lord. God was not pleased with that. Do you remember when Moses gave six excuses in Exodus chapter 4? Six. Yeah. Then he said, finally he said, Moses was using excuses, I can't talk, I'm not fluent. Then finally he just told God the truth. I don't want to do it. The Bible says the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And verse 24 says, the angel of the Lord came to stop Moses. Ah, Satan. Do your homework. What Judas was about to do is not something that God liked. So if you're not careful... He's in the recruiting business. He is Satan and he likes people doing satanic things. Yeah. If you're against your brother, your sister, you're resisting them, check. Who are you working for? What spirit is this that you have? Good. Let me tell you something. go to court. You don't have to struggle to court. You're seated there. You're seated in heavenly places right now. You just say, Father, there is anything Satan has against me. I use the blood. I'm guilty. You could be in the company of people who are making fun of Trump. You never said anything, but you were there. You say, any person who's made fun of the president in my hearing, I'm guilty. I'm, I'm a partaker of their sin. Satan has nothing on me. 
So you pray. You, you come to the Thursday prayer meeting which Rosanne is leading and you're screaming and she's getting a breakthrough, you're not. Because Satan has something against you. He says, why are they coming for the prayer meeting and there's blah, 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 blah. Be careful how you talk over your children, your grandchildren. Other, he says, e even they don't even believe what their children can do. Look at what they're talking. Words don't die. They always hover around. He looks around for whom he may devour. <sighs> Go to court. Take advantage of a court that God has put in place. It's, it's a wonderful court because your father is the judge. The advocate is your brother. The person who reveals the secrets, the Holy Ghost, lives with you. It's a rigged court. <laughs> it's rigged yes. in your favor. Do not use the courthouse just to accuse your brother or your sister. Use the courthouse to judge yourself. You say, Lord. Lord, there is a place, and I'm telling you this, I'm saying it, I'm, I'm done after this. I'm telling you, you walk with the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you this from experience. The Holy Ghost will start, started asking me some questions. He says, you think you're jealous? I'm like, Lord, no. I'm <laughs> I, yeah, if you say so, I think I am. If you, say, if you ask your question, just say, you think you're jealous? I'm like, Lord, there is a possibility, yeah. You think you're always happy for your brother or sister when they get promoted? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. He will orchestrate some things your way. And make sure somebody is promoted in your hearing, in your sight, and you'll be like, oh my God. Why did they get a word like that? And I got nothing. The prophet came and jumped me and gave them a word. You know? Ah. He says, so oh, there's something in your heart. Solomon said this. Guard your heart. Because out of it are the issues of life. Take your heart to court. Say, Lord, where there is jealousy in my life, I judge myself. I'm guilty. I'll give you a Jewish perspective of something. The Jews say this. Never ask God to search your heart. Because he will find something. Just tell God, don't, don't judge me. Let me judge myself. I'm guilty. Don't come in here. The centurion said that. Why did he tell Jesus that? Was it because he had great faith? No, he knew. If you come to my house, you will find something you don't like. So let's, let's finish the business here. You tell Jesus, look, the greatest thing, the best thing in your life is not you knowing God. That's beautiful. The one of the best things in life is God knowing you. Listen, God knows about you. He knows everything about you. He knows the hairs. On, he knows, but he doesn't know you unless you open up. It's a privilege to tell Lord, come in. But uh, the other issue, I've judged myself. I've gone to court. Yeah. Taken advantage of the blood. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've judged myself. Then he says, good. But don't let God. Actually, when David prayed that, when David prayed, search me, O God. He numbered Israel and he got in trouble. God will find something. Oh, yeah, he will. Don't let him come in there. Clean up. Take advantage of the blood, clean up. Yeah. Take advantage of the court and say, Lord, I might not like this politician, I might not like this party, I might not like this church, I don't like the way so and so preaches. I judge myself. The devil likes it when you scream. You know, screaming at him doesn't do anything. I bind you, Satan! No, 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 it doesn't change. He has papers to legally rob you. And he loves it. And then he blames God. Your God never delivered you, did he? Your prayers are not working, are they? And he laughs. 
then God looks bad. But it's you who never went to court. As usual, Pastor Dave, I don't know where to quit, so please come. <laughs> Great job. Boy, that's, that touches everybody, doesn't it? That is awesome. I'll tell you one story, and then we're going we're gonna to go. And I, matter of fact, Pastor, I want you to stay here just a minute. I want you to pray for all of us. Uh, you know, the, the Scripture is very clear. If we judge ourselves, we will not be judged. And I remember uh, years ago, uh, how many remember uh, Pastor, oh golly, I'm trying to remember, um, uh, I, I can't quite remember the, the name of this individual, but they were a husband and wife team, and this is your, huh? No, but no, but th this is years ago, and we when we just started Healing Rooms, and uh I think it was Maud and Ron, but I'm not positive. I think it was Ron and Ron and Maud Panelitas. But anyway, it was when we first started Healing Rooms. And they sent a runner down to me, and they said, uh, we have a real issue. This lady's demon-possessed. This is spirit speaking through her, and we don't know what to do. So I remember going up there, and, and I looked at the lady, and they, they told me, they said, she won't forgive. She's been married four times. She hated all her husbands, and she wouldn't forgive any of them and um, that was obviously holding her back from getting healed and so I, I looked at this lady and I said all right I'm going to talk to you dear I'm talking to you I don't want to talk to the spirit that has been speaking through you I want to talk to you and I ask you one question are you willing to forgive these husbands and she said in her own voice no I'm not and the enemy had been saying, I don't have to leave because she hasn't released, she hasn't forgiven. So I turned to uh, Maud and Ron and I said, we're finished here. There's nothing more we can do. And let's just go home. So this is very timely, great word. Pray for it and let's seal it. Let's pray. No, no, nobody is big enough. Just humility is the thing. Just go to God. Yeah. I said, Lord, I, I judge myself. Jesus said, if you claim to see, then you become blind. Yeah. If you say you're not without sin, oh, it's coming. Humility is the best way. Father, we thank you. We ask that you'd help us just to humble ourselves before you and come to you saying, Lord, we are in need to check ourselves where Satan has accused us. Help us by the power of your spirit. Let us take advantage of the blood. Let's take advantage of the court system. Help us. Let the spirit of God woo us into going to court. In our own individual sessions at home, the things we could have said, convict us about words that are idle that we could have said, that have been messing us up and the devil has been using them. Help us by the power of your spirit and let Jesus be glorified. We thank you and we honor you because in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Bless one another. Thank you so much for being here. Healing Rooms Tuesday, Wednesday.